Hey everyone, it's me Regina again, coming at you guys with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my November TBR. What I'm going to do a little bit different from last month is that I'm going to keep my TBR a little shorter. I, I realized that last month I had so many books that I wanted to read that I probably go through a very small fraction of them. So I said, you know what, for History November, that's what I'm going to do, and I'll tell you why in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to take about three books and one optional book. And yeah, so we'll get ready to that. Alright, so why History November? Well, just so you know, this is also in conjunction with not just my Spooktober, but my Fall TBR. So yes, yeah, so that big pile of books that I recently got from the Strand or the Library, those still apply. But I wanted to do History in November because, for one thing, the election is happening in a couple of days and Veterans Day is coming up on the 11th of November, which also coincides with Remembrance Day in Britain and various European countries, so I thought it would be a good month to read books regarding history, as well as my love for history. Ever since the third grade, I have always loved history. While I favor world history more, I found that teaching U.S. history was a lot more easier. Not sure how that happened. So, without further ado, let's get to it. First book on my list is The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. I started this a few months ago, and I'm a decent way through. Hence why I'm picking up this book, so it's a little easier for me. Uh, so this one is about, it's two different timelines. One, uh, 1947, in the chaotic aftermath of World War II, American college girl Charlie St. Clair is pregnant, married, and on the verge of being thrown out of her very proper family. She is also nursing a desperate hope that her beloved cousin, Rose, who disappeared in Nazi-occupied France during the war, might still be alive. So that's for 1947. But then we have 1915, as you know, it is around the time of World War One. A year into the Great War, Eve Gardiner burns to join the fight against the Germans and unexpectedly gets her chance when she's recruited to work as a spy. Sent into enemy-occupied France, she trained by the mesmerizing Lily, codename Alice, the queen of spies, who manages a vast network of secret agents right under the enemy's nose. So that's what it's basically about, uh, the pacing of it. Is really good. I enjoy the writing style of Miss Quinn and it has speckled edges which I don't know if oh, too many people who like them but I like them. It, it kind of ages the book a little bit which is nice. Um, so that's the Alice Network. Sorry. I'm gonna give you a view of my bookshelf. Next, you've seen this in another video, is The Only Woman in the Room. This one is a historical fan, not historical fan fiction, historical fiction about a woman named Hedy Lamar. She was a scientist and an actress. So this is the brief synopsis. She possessed a stunning beauty that almost certainly saved her from the no rising Nazi party and led her to marriage with an Austrian arms dealer. 
she also possessed a stunning mind. Underestimated, she overheard the Third Reich's plans while at her husband's side. Understanding more than anyone would guess, she devised a plan to flee in disguise from their castle, and the whirlwind escape landed her in Hollywood. She became Hedy Lamar, screen star. So it looks like she needs to have a different name at the moment. I'm not sure what it is. I haven't read this book yet, but it's but it looks promising. Oh, by the way, in, um, I haven't mentioned it, but I should. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. I try to get a video out every Sunday, and I have other videos out on the weekdays if I so choose. But it's mostly Sunday, sometimes very, very early Mondays. Right, back to it. Next one, I have Salt to the Sea by Rita Sophitis. I have the other book from her as well, um, The Fountains of Silence. I am not going to do double authors, meaning I'm not going to read more than one book by an author this month. Again, for my sanity and just to make it a little bit easier. And I want to save that book for a more relaxed time, I guess. This is what the story is about. The forgotten tragedy that was six times deadlier than the Titanic, which was in 1912. Winter 1945, four refugees, four secrets. Each one born of a different homeland, each one hunted. And haunted by tragedy, lies, and war. As thousands desperately flock to a coast in the midst of the Soviet advance, four paths converge, vying for passage among, sorry, for passage aboard the Wilhelm Gustloff. If my German slash Belgian friends are watching, I apologize for the accent. A ship that promises safety and freedom. But not all promises can be kept. I started this book a few days ago, and I'm already 55 pages into it. It's a little slow at the moment, and it is in the perspective of Joanna, Emilio, Florian, and Alfred. Um, what really drew me to this book? Again, it's just a cover. And I like hearing about little known events in history. So, I don't know if you guys have noticed, three out of the four books, I'm going to tell you the fourth one in a second, are mostly related to World War I and II. I really, really gravitate more towards World War II stories, whether it be Holocaust memoirs or books like The Book Thief, which was the German citizenry perspective, which I thought was a beautiful book. Phenomenal. I may actually reread that. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I just, if you're a history buff, we all have our little niche, our, our little area or corner of history that we mostly prefer. I like 20th century history because I feel that all over the world that is just the most, one of the most action-packed centuries. You know, from 1900 to 1999, you have the world plunging in and out of darkness. You will see where humanity has soared to its highest points and has fallen to the lowest point. It is amazing. I also like European history, in which World War II in one mostly, but in the sense that I like Tudor history. Um, I haven't read that many books by, by uh, with the setting of 
Tudor history, like Henry VIII and his son and daughters, but I know a lot about them. I, I enjoy that period of history because it's where England uh, joined uh, or converted into Protestantism after the Great Schism because Henry VIII wanted to divorce his wife of 18 years, Catherine of Aragon. So, yep, oh, by the way, once they start talking about history, I kind of don't stop. I'm a nerd that way. Alright, the last one is more recent history called Voices from Chernobyl. This one is a 2015 Nobel Prize winner. This is mostly about the perspectives of the people who have lived through a nuclear disaster. Was it a nuclear disaster? Biological warfare. You know what I mean. And this happened in the year 1986. So, what year is it now? Thirty three? No. Yep. Thirty three years. Feel free to comment how bad I am at math. I really am. But I am not that bad that I will say one times thirty nine is three hundred and eighty one. True story. A student of mine at one point asked me that this last week. I, I don't know. So again, um, this is, it doesn't really have a summary, but it's more of a different quotes. I read to a couple. I'm afraid of the rain. That's where Chernobyl is. I'm afraid of snow, of the forest. This isn't an abstraction, in my view, but an actual human feeling. Chernobyl is in my home. It is the most precious thing. Sorry, it, it's in the most precious thing, my son, who was born in the spring of 1986. Now he is sick. Who's to blame? In order to answer the question of how to live, we need to know who's to blame. We demand that all atomic stations be closed and the nuclear scientists be put in jail. We curse them, but knowledge, knowledge by itself, can't be criminal. Scientists today are also victims of Chernobyl. I want to live after Chernobyl, not die after Chernobyl. I want to understand. So from what I'm understanding is that it was a nuclear biological warfare. Effects that are still being felt to this day. There was, I'm sorry, this is one aspect of history that I heard very vaguely about. Like, I remember the last time I heard about this was in 8th grade when we were studying Chernobyl, but on the, under the guise of biological, chemical warfare and stuff like that. But after that, I probably heard it once more. So, 8th grade was in 2008, so it's been 11 years. So, let me see what I can find. This happened in Belarus, uh, the former territory of the USSR. Mm. Oh, it's, it's pretty good. I'm excited about this. I've also started this book again about a month ago, and I'm 22 pages in. I, I, yeah, I started about th three out of four books. And this is short, so I hope to finish this ASAP. And I'm going to end here for now. Tell me what you guys are reading for November. Tell me what you'd like to see, what you'd like me to do. Um, I still have a couple of reviews to film which I will be doing very soon. Um, oh, I subscribed to a book 
box subscription today. I will be unboxing that whenever it comes through. I'm not going to tell you that just yet. But other than that, have a wonderful night, day, afternoon, wherever you are, and bye! <laughs>